Following the announcement of Jeff Bezos' Starlink copycat, Project Kuiper, things between the two billionaires have become extra sour, especially with Bezos trying to drag Elon into murky legal waters. We'll get into that later. But for now, let's get analytical. What tricks does Jeff Bezos have up his sleeve to compete with Starlink? And does Project Kuiper really have what it takes? First announced spring of 2019, Project Kuiper is Jeff Bezos and Amazon's entry into the satellite internet race. Kuiper gained FCC approval to begin satellite launches in July of last year, and has reportedly invested $10 billion into getting its 3,236 satellites to space. In a recent press release, Amazon claimed that a project of this scale requires significant effort and resources. And due to the nature of satellite constellations, in low Earth orbit, it's not the kind of initiative that can start small. Luckily for Kuiper, big projects and big pockets are exactly what Bezos has become known for. Amazon executives are pitching Kuiper as the global solution to remote work issues. According to Dave Limp, senior vice president of Amazon, they've heard many stories as of late about people who are unable to do their jobs or complete schoolwork because they don't have reliable internet at home. There are still many places where broadband access is unreliable or where it doesn't exist at all, and Amazon aims to change that with Kuiper. A noble cause, no doubt about it. It. But if it sounds a bit familiar to you, it's probably because it's almost the same thing SpaceX has been doing with Starlink since 2015. In the latest bout between Bezos and Musk, it seems like the Amazon founder has been doing whatever he can to slow down the blisteringly fast progress of SpaceX and Starlink in particular. So on August 27th, an Elon Musk tweet showed us just how much this new Kuiper vs Starlink feud has affected the two billionaires' dealings. Early Friday morning, Elon tweeted, Turns out Bezos retired in order to pursue a full-time job filing lawsuits against SpaceX. It's worth noting here that the misspelling of Bezos' name is by no means a typo, but rather the Spanish word for kisses. It's also worth noting that this was a hard-hitting double jab by Elon. Elon's tweet was in response to news that Amazon's broadband satellite company, Kuiper Systems, was trying to get the FCC to prevent SpaceX from launching a second generation of Starlink satellites. According to The Verge, Elon's right, but only for the most part. This case in particular doesn't appear to be a formal lawsuit. What's become clear as day, especially after these events, is that Bezos and his various companies seem particularly keen on taking a if-I-can't-have-it-no-one-can approach to space exploration by repeatedly targeting its most prominent competitor with legal obstacles. So how do the two rival satellite providers compare? Well, Amazon's Kuiper system has yet to launch any satellites of its own, so that means we'll only be doing a deep dive on Starlink. Starlink is currently powered by around 1,740 low-Earth orbit satellites which serve an estimated 90,000 customers. The service first rolled out with a beta program targeted at select consumers for $99 a month, and in the past year has begun looking to test the network for aviation service in-flight and expand it to large moving vehicles as well, like ships and trucks. While Starlink is still in beta, SpaceX recently said that the network has about 90,000 users in 12 countries so far, with over half a million orders of refundable deposits placed by future customers. On top of that, SpaceX is seeking permission from the FCC to launch 30,000 additional satellites on top of the nearly 12,000 it already has a license for. The plan, known as the Starlink Gen 2 system, also informed the FCC exactly where the new satellites will be positioned around the world. In the amendment filed with the FCC, SpaceX wrote, this Gen 2 system was designed to complement the first generation constellations SpaceX is currently deploying. While the original constellation provides unprecedented capacity for a satellite system, the demand for more broadband continues to grow unabated, and the need for user connectivity has never been more important. Amazon wasn't having it though, and Kuiper Systems corporate counsel tugged at the FCC's sleeves, urging it to stop Starlink Gen 2 in its tracks over claims that major details such as altitude, inclination, and even the total number of satellites were left unsettled. On July 31st, the director of satellite policy at SpaceX, David Goldman, filed a response to Amazon's FCC request, arguing that Bezos' company is trying to slow Starlink's progress to help Project Kuiper catch up. Goldman urged the FCC to recognize the delay tactic for what it really was, a continuation of efforts by the Amazon family of companies to hinder competitors in order to compensate for Amazon's failure to make progress of its own. Goldman also pointed out the fact that Amazon had not updated the FCC in nearly 400 days on Kuiper's approach to interference in orbital debris, and yet took only four days to object to the SpaceX Gen 2 amendment. Another interesting statistic highlighted by David Goldman was that while Amazon had waited 15 months to explain how its system works, it has lodged objections to SpaceX on average about every 16 days this year alone. All these hard-hitting truths even prompted a tweet from Elon, who doubled down on his earlier Bezos burns saying, filing legal actions against SpaceX is actually his full-time job. Wow, if that's not an eye-opener, we don't know what is. Now more than ever, a series of bad decisions and clouded judgment have depicted Jeff Bezos and Amazon as somebody nobody can stand. 
Sore losers. Elon has publicly criticized Jeff Bezos and his companies several times in the past year, at one point accusing Amazon of trying to hamstring Starlink and saying that Blue Origin should consider spending some money on actual lunar lander hardware instead of suing NASA and hiring consultants. There's no doubt about it. Elon and his team at SpaceX are working extra hard on Starlink Gen 2, and if Amazon doesn't want to lag further back than it already has, it had better start diverting the time and effort it uses towards smearing Starlink into the Kuiper project. SpaceX says that the Gen 2 Starlink satellites are heavier and will be somewhat larger and generate more power than originally designed. It'll allow the satellites to supply expanded capabilities for SpaceX's network, as well as accommodate additional payloads in the future, which probably means that Starlink satellites may be able to host sensors or antennas for other companies further down the line. The preferred configuration for Gen 2 would feature 29,988 Starlink satellites in orbit, deployed at 9 altitudes, ranging from 211 miles to 381 miles. Previously, SpaceX had proposed Starlink would have 30,000 satellites across 8 altitudes, with the range being from 204 miles to 381 miles. The FCC filing said that SpaceX would target multiple inclinations to more evenly spread capacity by latitude, ensuring better, more consistent global coverage. On top of that, SpaceX's amended plan would nearly double the number of satellites deployed in a sun-synchronous orbit, which would allow the company to provide better service to polar regions like Alaska. The filing also noted that SpaceX has invested in advanced propulsion capabilities for its satellites, so the collision risk with large objects is considered to be zero, while at the same time, the spacecraft is fully capable of maneuvering. When a Starlink satellite malfunctions, SpaceX disposes of the satellite by re-entering the Earth's atmosphere so it burns up and disintegrates. Space debris is another threat both to and from Starlink satellites that SpaceX aims to further protect protect against with Gen 2. The company is aware of the possibility that its system could become a source of debris in the unlikely case of a collision with small objects or meteoroids that could either create jetsam or cause loss of control of the spacecraft and prevent post-mission disposal. SpaceX has continued to look for ways to make its spacecraft even more resistant to such impacts. Although the design of these protective features is still being finalized, SpaceX has improved redundancy in their power and propulsion systems. Many SpaceX fans have been waiting for the inevitable involvement of Starship in deploying the Starlink satellite network, and they recently had something to smile about after SpaceX's latest filing to the FCC. The document outlined that SpaceX intends to use the colossal stainless steel rocket as the primary delivery system for Gen 2. Back in 2019, SpaceX president, Gwyn Shotwell, previously touted the increased capability Starship would bring. The Falcon 9 rocket can launch 60 Starlink satellites at a time, but Starship would be able to take 400 satellites at a time. Amending Starlink's altitudes and constellation design would also allow SpaceX to launch the satellites directly into intended orbits with Starship. Wondering how? According to SpaceX, the revised orbital planes would enable single-plane launch campaigns that capitalize on the ability of Starship to deliver satellites at a faster pace by not necessarily requiring a waiting period for orbital precession in a parking orbit. SpaceX could deploy satellites into their operational orbits within a matter of weeks after launch, rather than months. In case Starship is not operational by the time Starlink Gen 2 systems start launching, SpaceX did include a deployment plan for the Gen 2 satellites that continues to utilize its Falcon 9 rockets. Meanwhile, fans of Amazon will have to wait until 2023 for the very first Kuiper satellite launch by United Launch Alliance. Yes, there won't be a Blue Origin spaceflight for the newest addition to the Bezos fold. And if you'd like to air your grievances about that, you can find Jeff Bezos and Amazon's Kuiper systems at a courtroom somewhere in the US, desperately trying to throw a wrench into SpaceX's plans for Starlink.